D Surrey 0800 587 1046 Our top story this morning and is an oil field near Hawley about to become one of the most successful in the country. We produced almost 5 million litres, that's about 29,000 barrels of oil. It's uh, looking very good. Over the past six months, tests at Horse Hill have produced nearly 30,000 barrels of oil. Now, the company which owns the site, UK Oil and Gas, wants to drill up to four new wells and extract oil for the next 20 years. Our environment correspondent, Yvette Austin, has the details. Routine maintenance on the main well at Horse Hill. Initial drilling and testing complete. The plan now is to enter full-scale production which could last 20 years. But the plan is to extend the site into this field to make room for tanks that will store more than 9,000 barrels of oil. There will also be electricity generators which will be using the gas that's produced on site. But you won't see any new oil wells because they'll be underground and horizontal. But the company has been met with opposition. Protesters worry about leaks, water contamination and even that fracking might take place. Oil tankers on the road are also a concern. Sergio Conti runs a bicycle repair shop. I had problems opening this little workshop uh, for repairing bicycles. The objection was on environmental grounds, noise and traffic. And uh, it was delayed by almost a year. And uh, all of a sudden, there's this huge uh, industrial development going ahead next door. The company insists it doesn't frack, but more testing for naturally flowing oil across the Weald Basin is planned. That's a bit Austin there reporting from Horse Hill. UK Oil and Gas are the company that own the site there. I've been speaking to their chief executive, Stephen Sanderson. Well, we put in a planning application for up to seven wells. We have planning permission to drill another two horizontal wells, which we uh, will be doing around April time. And from then on, after hopefully we get the planning consent in the autumn, we'll be looking to drill another two wells in early 2020 for the Portland and then perhaps another one in the Kimmeridge. So what's actually happening there right now at this moment? Uh, the, uh, this moment right now we're actually just doing a little bit of routine maintenance on the well itself. We have been producing oil here s for about six months. We've produced almost five million litres, that's about 29,000 barrels of oil. It's uh, looking very good which is why we put the planning application in to uh, seek to put it into full-time production. Now I'm no oil man, uh, you say that sounds pretty good so far. How much oil do you think there is at Horse Hill? Well, put it this way, the, the targets we have for these next wells are about 1,000 barrels per day, which is uh, the, using a horizontal well, and they give you three times uh, a vertical well. If we get to that 1,000 barrels a day, that will make Horse Hill the, the second largest oil-producing field in the onshore UK. And clearly we're looking to drill multiple wells, so, uh, you know, several thousand. And it will also put UCOG into... Uh, the top three oil producers in the onshore UK. So it's, it's a significant field. Can we clarify though, because many people hear oil and they start thinking about fracking, can you categorically rule out any fracking ever, whatsoever? Yeah, we, uh, we've categorically ruled that out for a long time. We don't need to frack here. You know, we have very good flow rates from the natural state of the rock, so there's absolutely no need. Plus, we can't because our, our formations are shallower than the 1,000-metre ceiling for fracking. So we don't need to, basically, because Mother Nature has already done it for us. Tell us about the area and what you've done to consult with residents. Well, I'm standing right next to what we call our uh, viewing tower here, which is sort of like a poor man's grandstand, perhaps. So we've had about two or three groups of local residents into the site. We've uh, shown them everything that we're doing. We've answered their questions. We have a lot of engagement locally. We're primarily concerned, of course, with the people that live immediately around the site. I think they've gone away um, quite happy, but you'd have to uh, ask them what they feel. But uh, generally, UCOG has taken quite a lead in the industry for engaging with the local community. So 
we plan to be here for a long time, so it's important that you know we have a good relationship for them. And I, I think it's also worth mentioning that we uh, voluntarily will plan to uh, give uh, around 6% of our revenues, gross revenues, to the local community, uh, which will be business rate taxes and, and, a, and a royalty. And for our sort of thousand barrel a day target, if we get to that, that will be about a million quid in the first year per well to the, to the local community. So that, that's, uh, that's quite significant, I think. Can you explain how you dish that money out then? Well, I think the mechanism isn't exactly uh, sorted, but it will probably be done via some form of charitable trust or something like that. It's a very similar system to what the UK Onshore Operating Group have put into place. So, um, as I said, it's voluntary, at least, of course, the amount to the local uh, community. Obviously, business rate taxes, you know, everyone has to pay those as long as you make a profit. The Green MEP, Keith Taylor, he's worried about an impact on climate change and he says it's an affront to the local communities and a blight on their countryside. Well, Keith Taylor says lots of things, but I'm not sure how many people believe what he says. I certainly don't. I think if you come to the site, you'll see that uh, there's very minimal visual impact. We take a lead in the way that uh, we conduct our um, operations. And I think the, the environmental or the environment agency would say that we probably um, lead the field in the UK onshore. When you've had residents there having, having a look, uh, do they walk away, do you think, satisfied with what's going on? Because when we've covered these stories before, and I think people get confused of, you know, lorries here and that there, uh, as to what the future will be like as once, you know, you've done all your exploration, it just flows then, doesn't it? Yes, the only thing that people will see is if we continue to export oil, they'll see maybe five to ten maximum oil tankers leave the site per day in the first year. That's in the weekdays, not at the weekends. So it's very minimal intrusion. That's Stephen Sanderson from UK Oil and Gas. More reaction on this in the next hour of the programme. And if you live in that area, uh, we'd love to hear from you, of course. 81333 is the text. Start with the word radio. Send us your message. You can tweet at BBC Surrey. Um, so a million pounds, he was saying. Um,